Hi guys, welcome to Safe Diving. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a pretty comprehensive look at how to change a hose on a regulator. And it's important that you know how to do this properly because you can really damage your regulators if you do it wrong. Now, I'm gonna show you how to check your hoses for damage first. So if you've already found some kind of damage, then you can skip ahead to this timestamp to, uh, to find out the best way to remove it. Uh, if you've already removed it, but you don't know what size hose to choose, uh, then head to this timestamp here. And if you already have your replacement hose, uh, then you can just go ahead and skip ahead to this timestamp. So the first thing is, is that you need to know if your hoses need changing at all. If you're just changing them for cosmetic reasons, because you want some funky colored hoses, uh, or if you want to change up the lengths of your hoses, then that's perfectly fine. Um, you can pretty much skip this step, but let's take a, uh, a closer look at taking a look at your hoses for damage. So checking your hoses for damage is really easy. Um, I've got three different hoses here. I've got a braided hose, I've got a traditional rubber hose, and then a high pressure hose. And all you're really doing is looking for any kind of inconsistencies. Um, so when I start off um, sort of checking over a hose, and I tend to do this after dives, uh, sort of when I was sort of washing up and packing away my kit. And then when I'm unpacking it before a dive, just so they Basically, hoses are really, really cheap. They're only, um, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. So um, to replace a hose is pretty cheap and easy. Um, so it's worth kind of looking for damage because I'd rather find something and then replace it instead of finding it when I'm actually on my dive. <clears throat> so all I do at first is I just sort of feel down the length of the hose, feeling for any kind of inconsistencies, any lumps, bumps, any weirdness, uh, any kind of abrasions. Um, I mean, this one, for example, this has a, um, a bunch of numbers stamped into it, if you can see that on there. And um, that's fine, that's the uh, the manufacturing. That'll be a, um, uh, like a lot number. But um, but any kind of scrapes or scratches or, um, or anything sort of cut into it that might sort of damage the integrity of the hose is, uh, is definitely worth keeping an eye on. And it's kind of, use your best judgment as to uh, sort of whether it needs to be um, sort of replaced. Now, on from that, I tend to go to each end of the hose where the sort of ferrule is, this metal section that kind of clamps it on, and I just sort of give it a little bit of a, uh, a twist, a bend, uh, sort of all the way around, just looking for any kind of cracking, because rubber hoses, after a while, especially if they're kind of bent and stretched, um, or sort of left too dry, they can crack. And, uh, and this external shell is very, very important. So um, yeah, just kind of look for any, um, any imperfections. Moving on to the uh, the other end of the hose, um, I've got a hose protector on this one. Hose protectors are good because they stop that um, sort of hose from bending, as I just said. The downside is is that they um, they cover up the hose and they can hide um, degradation, and they also trap some water around it, so um, they don't dry out quite properly. So when you're checking over your hoses, pull these back um, and sort of take a look underneath. If they, some of them, they're pretty stiff. If they don't come, then give them a, uh, a twist and kind of unscrew them. If they're really, really tough, you can use some hot water um, and that'll kind of soften that up. But um, so next time, put a bit of silicone grease on there and then it will come uh, a lot easier. So as you can see underneath there, it's a, uh, it's a slightly different color because of this stuff is just kind of building up. So um, again, just kind of give it a uh, flex, just check it over, make sure there's no damage, any kind of wear and tear. Check the, uh, the metal work, make sure nothing uh, like verdigris or something is building up. No salt crystals or anything that can kind of damage it as it moves. Um, and yeah, that's how you check your, um, your rubber hoses. Now, on a, um, on a rubber high pressure hose, you will have sort of pinpricks, or you usually get pinpricks along the other uh, length. I don't know if the camera can actually pick that up, but about once every centimeter or kind of half inch or something, there's a teeny tiny little pinprick 
that's fine, that's from the manufacturing uh, sort of process, and that's to allow any gas on the inside to, uh, to escape. So a lot of times when you're actually on a dive, right at the beginning, you might see a teeny tiny um, sort of little bit of bubbles kind of coming out of that. If it's the odd bubble and uh, it's like once a centimeter, that's fine. If it's a steady stream of bubble, um, that's a problem. But um, but yeah, the, the odd one or two bubbles um, coming out of these pinpricks is fine. That's exactly what they're for. And the same after a dive, if you see sort of water uh, sort of almost weeping out of these holes, that's fine as long as it's not um, just tons of water, obviously. <clears throat> Braided hoses are much the same, except with these, again, you're feeling for lumps and bumps. Um, you're not gonna get that kind of cracking, but what you can get is the odd thread uh, kind of breaking. If one or two is uh, kind of frayed, that's okay, it can kind of survive. If it's any more than kind of three, then um, yeah, I'd start to think about sort of replacing that hose. Um, discoloration is fine, but um, yeah, just double check that um, that not too many of these um, these threads are actually just coming out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's how you really kind of check over um, sort of damage. Obviously, if there's any leaks coming from any particular place, then it's more likely to be a, uh, an O-ring if it's at either end. If it's down the length of the hose, then you have an integrity problem and you definitely need to swap it out. Okay, so you want to, or you need to swap over a hose, then you need to make sure what size hose you need once you've actually taken the old one off. If you're swapping over a high pressure hose for your gauges, uh, then it's super easy because they only have one fitting, 7 16 but for low pressure hoses for your second stages or your BCD, then it can get a bit complicated. Now there is a standard male and female thread size for regulator hoses and that's 3 8 and 9 16 The downside is, is there are a select few regulators that use something like a half inch thread or something unique. Now these are pretty rare but super easy to identify. Uh, you pretty much only see these on Mares and a few uh, Apex regulators. Um, but let's take a closer look at how to size up your thread size. Now sizing up uh, sort of what size thread your hose is, is pretty simple. Um, especially when you come to high pressure hoses because there's only one high pressure hose fitting and that's 7 16 inch. And um, yeah, if you're taking off a high pressure hose and you replace it with a different high pressure hose, it's gonna be the same fitting. It doesn't matter um, kind of what brand made it. I mean, I think I've even got a... Um, a really teeny tiny. So this is also a high pressure hose, and um, as you'll notice, it's much, much skinnier, but uh, but these fittings are gonna be exactly the same. And uh, they're actually exactly the same, so the thread always goes on. So it's the same male size thread to the female size thread, so um, it's, it's never an issue. So high pressure hoses, really, really easy to, um, uh, to sort of replace, because you, uh, you can't really mix up that thread size. If you really, really want to, um, you can literally measure it, uh, and that will be 7 16 inches across. So that's how you can uh, sort of size up hoses, and that's particularly useful when you get to uh, low pressure hoses. So the golden standard, uh, sort of universal thread size on the male end, so this end, the bit that attaches onto your first stage, this is 3 8 of an inch, and again, that measures 3 8 of an inch across. Cross, um, so very easy to, uh, to measure, but you can get on a select few regulators, um, but it's mainly Mara's nowadays, you don't see it um, sort of too much anymore. You can get this guy, which is much, much bigger as you can see, and this is a half inch. So half inch, as the name suggests, is a half an inch across. So um, you can sort of mistake uh, sort of one for the other because on um, sort of websites or whatnot, if you're looking to buy your um, your hoses online, it can say regulator hose, and you either get three eighths of an inch or half inch. If the half inch is cheaper, it doesn't matter because it will not fit your regulator unless you have a half inch port. So um, yeah, when you first take it off, if it looks really really big and it's got a huge hole in it, then it might be a um, a half inch uh, sort of port. 
but um, but these are quite rare. It's only about I don't know one percent of regulators have that um, sort of half inch. 99.9% of hoses will have this um, 3 8 of an inch. And all low pressure inflator hoses for your BCDs and your dry suits, they'll all be 3 8 of an inch. Um, so that's really easy. On the other end, um, it's kind of just as easy. So this will always be 9 16 inch, this female thread, and that will go onto pretty much any second stage. The downside is there are a select few second stages um, that are unique. So if they have a swivel joint attached or kind of built into the second stage, you might not be able to fit a standard size hose. Uh, you have to sort of replace it with the hose that came with it so you can't change your length um, and others tend to have uh, sort of just unique like Apex Flight that had a sort of plastic ratchet style uh, sort of nut on it so that wouldn't take a standard size hose. A few Poseidon regulators um, they were very unique sizes so um, yeah just do kind of your reading first double check what size thread um, actually goes onto your second stage um, but nine times out of ten it's just going to be this universal fitting. Okay, so now you should hopefully know a little bit more about sizing up your hose threads and which size is which, but let's take a look at how to properly remove a hose. And this is important because regulators are all pretty much made from chrome plated brass, except for a few fancy titanium regulators. But either way, the metals that the regulators are made from is fairly soft, much softer than the drop forged steel of most tools, and the chrome plating as well is much softer still. And what this means is that if you're not careful, you can either scratch and ruin the finish of your regulator, or worse, you can actually bruise the metal or strip the threads completely, which can mean that you have just ruined your first stage. Now, the first important thing is to use fixed spanners or wrenches um, if you have them, and make sure that you use the right size. A spanner should fit the nut on the hose perfectly with very little wiggle. Too much wiggle can mean that when you're actually going to tighten or loosen the hose, it actually strips the nut. So double check that it isn't an imperial or a metric size because some manufacturers switch between the two. Now, I don't really recommend using adjustable spanners if you can avoid it, if you have nothing else, because these can actually loosen and slip on these uh, sort of small nuts and they can damage your hose or even your regulator. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at how to remove a hose properly. Removing hoses is very, very easy. Um, yeah, the main thing is just make sure you have the right size spanner or wrench, whatever you want to call it, and um, try to make sure it's fixed. If you can get fixed size ones, um, they're much, much better than your uh, sort of adjustables, but adjustables will get you out of a pinch. So removing a hose, I'm gonna remove the, uh, the regulator hose, this uh, kind of day glow yellow one first. So first of all, tidy everything up because the hoses go everywhere. And um, when you're unscrewing things, just remember that the entire hose is gonna unscrew. So stuff can sort of flick around. So make sure that your second stage is nice and safe and anything um, sort of valuable like your, your SPG. So these are the nuts that we're gonna focus on first. This is a sort of attachment to the first stage. Now this is a 14 mil. This will be different on different um, sort of regulators, but uh, yeah, just make sure that you get the right size and that when it's on, you don't have too much wiggle. This is fine. If it's anything more than that, then you might have the wrong size spanner <coughs> or it might be like, the imperial or the metric equivalent. So um, it's gonna be lefty-loosey, so uh, sort of anti-clockwise as it's sort of facing downwards. And it's just, yeah, sort of make sure that the first stage is nice and secure so that doesn't slip. If you've got a field handle, then fine, you can pop it in a vise, but you don't really need to. Make sure the spanner is really nicely seated. Make sure it's not sort of angled so that when you undo it, the sort of head just uh, sort of scratches and digs into the uh, the body of the first stage. And, uh, and yeah, all you're gonna do is unscrew it until it sort of rotates. <coughs> On from that, you can just do it by hand. Um, so yeah, just unscrew it. It'll take about sort of four or five turns. And then out it comes. So, um, 
So that's sort of removed from the, uh, the first stage. If we're then removing the second stage, just as easy. Now, um, what I'd like to do, but I can't actually do on this um, second stage, is use two spanners. The best way to do it is to uh, sort of have two separate spanners and then kind of pinch them together so that you're not rotating the barrel. Because what happens is when you're applying sort of so much force onto this nut, you're gonna rotate that, but what you can do is also rotate the barrel on the inside and that sort of moves all the mechanism on the inside of your second stage and you don't want to do that. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the size of this nut, if you can see that, is just too small, so I can't get um, sort of one in there, so uh, I just have to use one spanner, and if you have to, it's okay, just keep an eye on this barrel, make sure that that doesn't rotate, and uh, again, we're going anti-clockwise, um, so if the mouthpiece is facing towards you, you're, um, you're putting it downwards in that motion, again just taking that uh, sort of main force off and then undoing the rest by hand. Now when it goes into the second stage, there'll be a sealing o-ring on the inside, um, so that might just need a little bit of a tug just to, uh, to free it, um, but that's it, that's how you remove your second stage and your, your um, sort of hose is free. Moving on to um, the high pressure hose, I'm not gonna do the BCD hose because it's exactly the same as the regulator hose, but, um, but yeah. Onto the, um, the high pressure hose, exactly the same really, uh, except at the female end. So I'm gonna use my fixed spanner, again securing the, uh, the first stage, and then I'm gonna unscrew that, so making sure that that doesn't sort of get away from me or slip on that nut. Unscrew it with your fingers, and you're halfway there. So, then we get onto the, um, the actual uh, sort of female ends. Now this can be a, uh, a submersible pressure gauge like this, or it can be a wireless air transmitter. Um, what you're gonna need is two spanners, if you can sort of fit them. You can kind of use the, uh, the body of it. If you're uh, sort of in a pinch, just hold the, uh, the pressure gauge down and then undo it uh, as kind of like a lever. Um, but again, I prefer to use um, two spanners. And if they're next to one another, uh, do it that way around. Just make sure it's nice and neat and tidy, because then what you can do is, that's actually the one way around, I'm sorry. <clears throat> is actually loosen it by sort of pinching them together. So that little pinch means that the, um, the body of the SPG isn't moving, it's only this rotating nut. So um, yeah, and that's all you want to do. Finger tight, remove that. And then on the inside, you have this little guy. Now this is called a swivel pin. So a swivel pin has two tiny little O-rings on it. Um, so you've got to make sure that they are A, both there, because sometimes if they're pretty dry, they can get stuck on the inside of the, um, of the seating on the inside of the hose or inside of the, uh, the SPG. So you should have one on either end. If there's one missing, that's either because someone wasn't paying attention when they were fitting it, or it's stuck on the inside, and you might need a, uh, a kind of a dental pick or um, sort of something with a teeny tiny little hook just to kind of hook it out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how to remove hoses. So now that you have the old hose off, you now need to put the new one on. So most manufacturers attach, this, their, uh, attach their hoses at around five Newton meters of torque or kind of twisting force, which unless you have a torque wrench to hand, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of finger tight and then a little extra nudge. And I'll show you how tight right here. Okay, so putting your hoses back on is just as easy as taking them off. The main thing to remember here is to uh, not be too heavy handed. Remember these are very soft metals and uh, make sure that you don't cross the threads. So you know when you're trying to screw something in and it's ever so slightly off, if you do that, you can damage the threads both on your first stage and on the hose, which can just ruin both or one of them. And um, yeah, just sort of be nice and gentle and take your time, don't try and force anything. If you meet too much resistance, then chances are you might be doing it wrong. Uh, okay, so first of all, we're going to attach our second stage. 
So this is pretty much the reverse of, uh, of what we did earlier. But, um, but all we're gonna do is first of all, check that the O-ring is fine on the inside. Um, so just inside here, there's gonna be a, a black O-ring. Just check that, make sure it's one present and two. It just looks nice and clean um, and um, doesn't have any um, sort of dirt or anything on it. Now push it onto the, um, the second stage, probably about a millimeter or something. And, uh, and then all you're gonna do is screw up that nut it should be no harder than that. Uh, if you meet any kind of resistance, it might be cross thread. So if you do, just back it out, uh, sort of all the way. And then whilst applying pressure, keep sort of unscrewing it. And you hear that click? Once a rotation, you'll hear a click, and that's the threads kind of resetting themselves almost. So that then when you start to screw it in, it will go nice and easy. So um, yeah, you shouldn't require any effort to get it to this point. Once you're at this point, then you're using two spanners if you can. Um, I can't, unfortunately. So again, just keep an eye on that nut on the barrel, just making sure that isn't rotating and uh, it's just sort of pushing it away from myself. It's just sort of finger tight and then, yeah just that extra little nudge, that's about it. All you're after is enough sort of tightness that you can't undo that with your fingers. On the other end, um, just as easy, <clears throat> we're going to uh, sort of screw it into this. Actually, no, we're not. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into this port. But as you see on your, um, your first stage, you have lots of different ports all the way around it, but some of them are plugged up, and these are plugged up by port plugs. So port plugs are just a way of blanking off um, sort of unused ports, so that air doesn't leak out, obviously. And to uh, to remove them, you just need an Allen key. Again, these come in metric and imperial. Uh, it depends on the manufacturer. And um, once it goes in, you should have no more than that kind of wiggle. Um, it needs to be nice and tight. Again, because if it's uh, the wrong size and you apply too much pressure uh, instead of trying to unscrew it, you're going to strip that and you'll never get it out. You have to drill that out. Um, so I go for the short end of the Allen key in first because that gives you the most leverage. Push it anti-clockwise to, uh, to get that sort of tension off. And then the long end, you can just sort of use your fingers just to unscrew it. Five or six rotations and you're done. Put that to one side, keep hold of them. They are very, very useful, never throw those away. Um, actually, I'm gonna put it in the, um, the other port so that I don't lose it. So again, long ends just to um, sort of do the, the hard work. And then for the torque, you just get it sort of finger tight to there where it stops, and then you're going, boom, that's it. That's about five newton meters of torque. You, um, you don't really need sort of that much. Okay, putting the hose in, again, checking your O-rings, make sure they're nice and clean and, um, and nothing going on with them. Make sure it's nice and straight when you're putting it in. That's how you're gonna uh, sort of cross thread it if it's at an angle. And then the longer the hose, the more awkward it is. So when I'm screwing in my two meter long hose, that's a real pain. Um, Again, just make sure that your second stage is nice and secure. So I like to dangle that down um, so that's out of the way. It's not smacking against anything. And, uh, and yeah, just kind of like finger tight. Once you're at that point, you can put it back on the desk. And then with a fixed spanner, just get it finger tight. And then this time we're doing it clockwise. So it's so lefty loosey, righty tighty. Um, so that as it's pointing downwards, it's going clockwise, so it's coming towards you, making sure it's nice and well seated, securing that first stage, and then just pulling it about eh, that much. That's it. Again, it's only so much that you can't unscrew it by hand, um, so it will never undo itself, basically. Doing the high pressure hose, um, yeah, really easy. You're gonna get that uh, that swivel pin, pop that into, I like to do it into the hose, doesn't really matter, it can go into either. Pop that in, uh, if you need to, if they are particularly dry, you can put a, uh, a squidge of um, silicone grease on that. So uh, if you just like smear it between your fingers, that's all you want. Too much will just attract dirt. 
just a tiny film of it will uh, make your life a lot easier. Pop that in, pop your uh, sort of SPG on, again using your hands just to, uh, or your fingers, just to tighten that up. And then we're going to use that pinch method again to, uh, to tighten this up. Pinch them together, about that much. By the way, I made that noise, that little, so um, don't expect there's going to be a noise. And um, yeah, that's it. Again, so you can't undo it by um, uh, sort of fingers, and then screw it in. You can't mix up high pressure and low pressure ports, again, because they're different sizes. I don't have any open ones to show you, but a high pressure hose will only fit in a high pressure port. And again, making sure it's nice and straight in. If you want to, you can sort of unscrew it, wait for that click, and then go for it. Once it's in finger tight, again, we're using our good old spanner. It's the right size, give it a little, yeah. In. Um, so yeah, that's how to um, sort of reattach a, um, all sorts of different hoses. Okay, so that's inspecting, removing and fitting new hoses. So swapping and moving hoses on your regulators may feel odd when you're first starting out, but it isn't that tricky and it should really be something that you get used to as it will help you improve your regulator setup so that your hoses are in the right place. And it can save you some money in the long run too, not needing a dive center to move around some hoses for you. So was that easy or was it easy, huh? So are you now off to buy a full set of fit spanners and Allen keys? Um, if so, then good, your man beard should arrive in four to six weeks later. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. On my channel, I upload videos on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, all about how to be a better scuba diver. Now, I've been working in and around the diving industry for quite a long time now, and I have a lot of advice that I can help you out with. So if you need any help or advice with your diving, just let me know in the comments below and subscribe to my channel, and I'll probably make a video about it to help you out. So if you want to, you can click here to check out one of my latest videos on how to upgrade your equipment and your diving as well. And then click here to check one of my scuba diving advice videos. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.